welcome back now we will study about topology and overlay analysis now we need to understand that topology uh, gives us the relationship between uh, the spatial features like point line and polygon and going by the definition uh, we can say it's explicit encoding of spatial relationships between objects means the spatial location of each point line and polygon is defined in relation to each other means how they are located with reference to each other and topology can also be defined as the collection of rules and relationships that enables the geo database to more accurately model geometric relationships found in the world to understand it in a more better way let's have a look at this topological overlay now we want to do union this is our input coverage in the form of a square and this is the union coverage in the form of a circle now we want a union of these two items and we want to perform a function of union now union is the overlay polygons and keep all areas from both coverages now everything will from both the coverages will be retained we will have uh, you know every portion of input coverage and every portion of union coverage and the output will be something like this so this is the topological overlay using union function now uh, topological overlay using the identity function which means overlay points lines or polygons on polygons and keep all input coverage features now the focus is here on input coverage we are going to retain all the uh, features of input coverage and this is the identity coverage we will allow only the portions of identity coverage which are within the frame of input coverage so the output becomes like this which is quite simple to understand now the third is intersect which means overlay points lines or polygons on polygons but keep only those portions of the input coverage features falling within the overlay covering co coverage features now here we uh, have input coverage as well as the intersect coverage and here the focus is on intersect coverage so we will allow only those portions from input coverage which fall within the boundary of uh, you know uh, this um, uh, only those portions of the input coverage features falling within the overlay of the coverage will only allow those portions of input coverage which fall within the intersect coverage so output is going to be like this which is quite simple to understand to uh, understand uh, the different types of topological overlays we have point topology we have line topology and we have polygon topology now how we are going to understand that we have a point map this is the how these are houses located by point 1 2 3 and 4 and this is the polygon file uh, depicted by different land uses a b c and d now we are going to overlay these two houses and land use this is the output that we get uh, having uh, you know uh, different land uses and uh, different houses located within different land uses and this is the database that is being generated now you can see that house uh, the house owner uh, has uh, falls in the land use d and this uh, house falls in land use A and this house falls in land use C this is how we have done the point topology now we similarly we have line topology where we have you know a road uh, network which is uh, line number uh, you know road 1 uh, from this point to this node and from this point to this node road number 2 and road number 3 and similarly we have the land use now when we are ha having a line topology we have different roads falling within as an output falling within different land use types so the output in the database is going to be like this we have different kinds of roads falling within different land uses and you can simply understand that now coming to polygon topology where we have to 
ओवरले you know uh, polygons in the in the, in in uh, in 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 as inputs in uh, both where we have the provinces like province 1 province 2 and province 3 and we want to see uh, which province has which land use type now when we overlay this we are going to get output like this and we can clearly see that province 1 uh, has uh, you know uh, land use uh, you know uh, this uh, one two and uh, three and you can see you can see here that province one uh, has land uses d a and b d a and b province one has land uses d one uh, d a and b likewise province three has land uses b a and c and uh, likewise province two falls in uh, land uses a uh, c and d or uh, inversely we can say that which uh, land uses uh, correspond to which provinces so we can say a land use falls in uh, you know province 1 as well as in province 3 as well as in province 2 likewise land uh, land use b falls in province 1 as well as in province 3 and likewise uh, for other land uses so uh, now uh, understanding a little more about a vector polygon outlay how does it look like and raster polygon outlay these these are the two this is the input and this is the intersect image and you can see this is the output in case of raster and the same in case of vector which is pixelated these number of pixels represent input and this is the Mm, uh, this is the uh, overlay uh, input and this is the out output that we get in the raster raster format this is how it can be depicted for for this is for the vector this is input and this is the overlay file and this is the output in case of uh, vector and this is uh, the input and this is the overlay file in case of we are going to uh, overlay them and this is the output that we get in the raster form now we have certain uh, line feature topological errors how this is an like this is uh, um, one uh, uh, x y coordinate this is another this is another but here when the uh, polygon has been started to be drawn uh, this is uh, this is an open polygon so we call this as undershoot the polygon is an open it's not a complete polygon so this is one of the topological er errors why we believe that a polygon has has been found but it is not actually with the polygon it's an open polygon so this is one of the errors and what are the different kinds of errors this is the undershoot this is undershoot wherein uh, it should have been uh, merged with this node but it falls short of Mm, uh, this uh, uh, this node and doesn't meet so this is called as undershoot and uh, now when the polygon has ha has had to uh, you know uh, be restricted to this up to this uh, you know node but it overshoots and you know uh, reaches here so this is called as overshoot so undershoot and overshoot are uh, some of the line feature topological errors that are encountered in gis then to understand it further this is the vector and this is the raster and how the overlay is done uh, this is the raster modeling wherein this different cells depicted 4 2 1 and 3 are added to uh, this is the input and this is the overlay uh, you know file and this is 3 4 1 and 1 and 4 and 3 becomes 7 2 and 4 becomes 6 1 and 1 becomes 2 and 3 and 1 becomes 4 this is how map map algebra takes place in raster data and uh, likewise in the uh, in the vector data there is uh, there is uh, routing and uh, in the in the background where database management database is there these database are integrated these database are integrated in the in the output file and you can see a database which has attributes of both the features or both the cells in case of uh, vector as well as raster respectively now what are the applications uh, of this topology and thematic overlay this is the thematic map overlay 
analysis what is it it is important technique for integrating data derived from various sources like this is the imagery this is elevation this is transportation these are the addresses these are boundaries these are water features this is survey control and this is our own data which is gathered from the real world and we overlay this and try to generate some output the, the layer regarding to one layer is called thematic map each map here each layer here is called as a thematic map each layer and when we overlay them we call them it as thematic overlay most important benefit of gis is ability to interrelate multiple types of information now this thematic overlay en enables us to uh, you know uh, interrelate interrelate uh, just just like boundaries with the water features with the transportation with the elevation and we get some output and we are able to relate all these thematic uh you know maps and uh, to quote an example is just uh, if we want to generate a groundwater potential zone map which depends upon different conditions like what is the soil type what is the slope of the soil what is the land use land cover what is geomorphology what is the lean uh, lineament status uh, geological term what is the lithology rock type over there how is the drainage what is the drainage density now these all contribute in one way or the other to groundwater potential now once these thematic maps are overlaid once these thematic maps are overlaid on each other we get an output which output in the form of a map which can be called as groundwater potential zone map because